So let's talk about linearization over here. Linearization. So we're going to go over the very basics of how you do a linearization of a nonlinear function. So let's take a function, and we're going to use the example of, say Valerie is walking in the street, in the road, and she's on her really tiny smartphone, she's messaging people, not paying attention, and the car, to avoid hitting her, swerves all the way around, and then has a correct its trajectory and, and goes back like that. Well, we can model this, so we'll call this x, and we'll call this position f of x. And this driver is really actually quite good. They are made a perfect cosine. So we'll model that as f of x equals a, we'll say some amplitude, cosine of x. So here's our nonlinear, oops, yeah, here's our nonlinear equation, and we're just going to say our amplitude here is a. So, okay, so there's our nonlinear function, and we want to linearize it, but where? Well, we have to pick that. So we will pick this point, so this is the point we're going to linearize, and we're going to call this x naught, or x zero, and x naught is what we call our equilibrium point. And we're picking it to be zero. When we do controls, we're almost we're gonna pick that to be where our function is equal to zero. Technically you could linearize around any point, but we will usually linearize around zero. So it's called the equilibrium point. And well we need to figure out what we're doing. We are trying to essentially model just this, around this equilibrium point, small signals around that equilibrium point. So we need to add some new variables or change our variables. We're going to introduce delta x. And this will be our perturbation, perturbation variable or signal. So this is just little perturbations around x naught, our equilibrium point. And we define delta x, the perturbation signal, as the x variable we had before minus our equilibrium point. And this is equivalent to, if you just move things around, x, what we had before, is the equilibrium point plus our perturbation. So these are equivalent. Sometimes it helps different people to think about it in different ways. But So we've added a new variable. We're going to change our system into that variable and linearize around that point. What we're really trying to find, I'm going to use prime for now, is our new equation around that point as a function of delta x. So how do we find that? That's what we're trying to find. The key is the Taylor series, Taylor series expansion. It's very important. So this is the key to linearization, and what this essentially says is that our new function, which will be a function of delta x, is going to be equal to the original function evaluated at the equilibrium point, x naught, plus, and here we'll take the derivative in terms of x of our function, evaluated at x naught, times our delta, uh, d delta x variable. So essentially, we're looking at the slope of it here. And there's more terms here in the Taylor expansion, so the next one would be one half do the squared double derivative function and evaluate it at x naught still, and then times it by the delta x squared. And then there would be more higher order terms. I always thought it was fun that we get to write hot in our equation, but we do not like these hot 
terms over here. So our higher order terms, we just assume they're zero. They're not affecting our system that much, so we just ignore them. And then we can focus just on this equation. So for our Taylor expansion, we will work with just this equation. Okay, so now let's evaluate our function at that equilibrium point. So let's follow this equation. So x equals, so this is our function evaluated at x naught. So I'm going to write this all out, cosine x naught plus the derivative of our function evaluated at x naught. So derivative here is a goes to negative sine and we're evaluating x naught. Then we multiply that by delta x. Okay, so now we can evaluate this. So we'll plug in our. Oh, I didn't tell you what the equilibrium point was. Well, let's. Here, the equilibrium point is going to be equal to. Well, here is. We look at this whole thing. For cosine, this would be pi. So it's pi over 4. So our equilibrium point is pi over 4. And so we take that value and we plug it into here. We have a cosine of pi over 4 minus a sine pi over 4. What am I doing? Oh, it should be pi over 2. So 5 over 2, sorry, now we're back, delta x. Okay, and then, now we can evaluate these. We know the cosine of pi over 2 is 0, and then we know that the sine of pi over 2 is 1. So it's negative a and 1, delta x. So our final linear expression for this function evaluated at x naught, which is pi over 2, is delta x equal to negative a delta x. So this simplifies very nicely. And if we think about this, well, this is a negative a, our a value will be positive, so it's a negative slope. And yeah, this point has a negative slope. And the Slope depends on the amplitude here. So if A is very large, this is going to be a steeper slope. And if it's smaller, it will be a less steep, steep slope on A. So this is the linearization at that problem at that point. We're going to look at more complicated problems and then take this and put it back into the transfer function. But I'll leave that for future videos.